I often hear woodworkers complain that using a jigsaw can be a frustrating and inaccurate experience. But if you use it properly, this can be one of the most versatile handheld power tools in your shop. In this video, I'll show you how to use it the right way, including some tips that I'll bet you've never heard before. Honestly, if you don't stick around until the end of this video, you're going to miss some really good stuff. So let's get started. A jigsaw is actually one of the safest power tools in your workshop because the exposed portion of the blade is usually beneath the workpiece. However, this does affect how you must support your workpiece during the cut. Let's just say you shouldn't hold it on your lap while you work. It's a common practice to just let the board hang off the edge of your workbench as you cut. And that's fine as long as there's enough wood on the bench top to keep it stable so it doesn't shift while you work. If in doubt, clamp it down. Another option is to elevate your workpiece so the blade can go all the way through without going into your bench top. Some sort of riser blocks or bench cookies are really handy for this purpose, but they don't have to be fancy. You can use scraps of wood as long as they're thick enough. You can even use chunks of styrofoam. Because the blade moves up and down rather than a circular motion, a jigsaw is unlikely to violently kick back out of a cut like a circular saw might, but it can bounce upward if you use poor technique. Perhaps the greatest danger comes at the end of the cut when some folks just grow impatient and they try to withdraw the tool before it stops its reciprocating motion. The end of the blade can then catch on and damage the workpiece or even a hand placed carelessly nearby. So let the tool fully stop before you remove it from your work. Finally, a jigsaw usually runs around 100 decibels. That's about four times louder than what's considered safe for unprotected ears. So wear hearing protection, wear your safety glasses, and if you're gonna be sawing for more than a minute or two, you might even wanna get a good dust mask. The term jigsaw can be a little confusing because it's been applied to different tools over time. When I was in eighth grade shop class, I was taught that this was a jigsaw and this was a saber saw. Technically, a jigsaw is any tool where the blade moves up and down in a reciprocating motion. So that means that this and this and this are all technically examples of jigsaws. Nowadays though, at least in the US, we commonly call this a scroll saw, this a reciprocating saw, and this a jigsaw. I like a jigsaw that has a variable speed mechanism so I can run it fast for softwoods, a little bit slower for hardwoods, and really slow for metals. Some saws have an orbital feature, which moves the blade slightly forward and back as it goes up and down. This produces a more aggressive cut that is certainly faster, especially in soft woods, as long as you don't mind some extra splintering along the edge. I also insist on a saw that has a quick release feature for fast, toolless blade changes. This usually means the saw requires T-shank blades as opposed to the older U-shanks, which often required an Allen key and a set screw to hold them in place. Honestly, I wouldn't give a dollar for an old U-shank saw at a yard sale. Now, as far as the number of the teeth on the blade is concerned, generally, the fewer the teeth, the faster the blade will cut, but the rougher the result may be. Now, faster cuts aren't just about saving time. If you have thick material, such as a two by four, you need a blade that will remove all that wood more efficiently, or you're gonna generate a lot of blade dulling heat. So I think something around six teeth per inch is best for thick materials. 10 teeth per inch, I think, is a good all-purpose blade if you cut mostly three-quarter inch stock, which is what most of us do. If you work with a lot of thin materials, three-eighths, quarter inch, then you might look for something finer than 10 teeth per inch. If you work with a lot of very dense materials, such as acrylics and metals, then you're gonna require fine teeth to limit the aggressiveness of the cut. Around 24 teeth per inch is a good range for those materials. Choosing the right blade is only the first step toward getting a high quality cut with a jigsaw. You also have to understand how the saw functions. Most blades feature upward pointing teeth or teeth that are angled toward the base of the saw. This pulls the saw downward toward the workpiece and it makes it easier to control the tool as compared to a blade with downward facing teeth or teeth that are angled away from the base of the saw. This might want to lift the saw up off the workpiece with each stroke and it'll make the saw harder to control and you might get more vibration. Upward facing teeth 
are more likely to tear the wood fibers as they exit the cut, which is on the top of the workpiece. That means in most cases you want the good side of the board, the one that will be most visible in the completed project, facing upward. This is especially true when you're cutting across the grain, which is when most tearout occurs. But what if you need a clean edge on the top side of the workpiece and you can't flip it over? Well, as I mentioned, reverse tooth blades are available to cut on that downward stroke. These are mostly used for cutting laminates such as countertops, and you have to be really careful to hold the saw tight on the surface as you cut. Of course, that just transfers the tear out from the top surface to the bottom. What if you can't tolerate tear out on either side of the board? Well, in that case, you might put a piece of painter's tape on this top side and then cut through it. The tape helps reinforce the surface fibers so they're less likely to tear along the edges of your cut. Another option is to use a knife to score the fibers along your cut line. This will produce a nice crisp edge, but it could be more difficult to score a curved line than it is to score a straight one. Perhaps the biggest complaint many people have about their jigsaw is their inability to get square edges because the blade just deflects to the side while they cut. Now while a cheap saw might not guide the blade as well as it should, the problem is most likely how you're using the tool. When making any cut, be it straight or curved, you have to let the blade do the work. If you try to push it to cut faster than the teeth wants to remove the material, you'll put too much stress on the blade and it'll start to wander and deflect inside the kerf. This may mean applying less force with duller blades, with fine tooth blades, or with narrow blades that simply bend more easily. As I mentioned, a dull blade will drift a lot more than a sharp one. Jigsaw blades are not that expensive. There's really no reason to use a dull blade. Keep some extras on hand so you can swap them out as soon as they begin to dull. Deflection is most common during curved cuts because folks tend to steer the saw by moving it sideways. Examine your technique closely. You might find that even though you're rotating your saw as you go around the curve, you're still pushing it to the side a bit. I think another cause is a misunderstanding of where the pivot point of the saw is. It should turn at the front of the blade, not at the center of the base. You don't twist the whole saw to go around a curve. You pivot at the front and you let the back follow the blade. This takes a little bit of practice, but it helps if you keep your eye fixed on the front of the blade where the cutting occurs as you maneuver around a curve. Jigsaws really excel at cutting curves, but tight turns can be a challenge. You have to get a feel for how much you can turn the tool before the blade binds in the curve and the saw starts jumping around. Often, this comes down to just maintaining forward progress. It's natural to slow the tool as you make a tight curve, but you can't completely stop. You have to move forward as you pivot or the blade will bind. It may help to put a little wax on the base of the saw. This will reduce friction and make it easier to turn the tool smoothly. The width of the blade can also limit the radius that your tool is capable of cutting. Narrower blades can cut tighter curves, but they can also flex more, so you have to be extra vigilant about deflection. Sometimes the best solution is to just make some relief cuts. These cuts allow material to fall away as you cut your curve. This gives the blade more room so it can cut a tighter radius than it might otherwise. One of the most common uses of a jigsaw is to make a cutout in the center of a workpiece. The most common method for starting this cut is to bore a hole that's a little bit larger than your blade. If you're cutting a circle, one hole may suffice. If you're cutting a square, you might bore a pair of holes at opposite corners. But that's not the only way to start a cut. You can actually skip the drill and plunge the saw itself. This is done by tipping the saw forward so the tip of the blade is above the work. The flat front of the shoe will give you the stability you need for this technique. As you turn on the saw, start tilting it backward. Move slowly, let the blade begin cutting into the wood. Soon after the surface is sufficiently scored, you'll want to slide the saw forward just a little bit, causing the blade to cut deeper into the wood. With practice, you can make pretty accurate plunge cuts this way. Another clever way to use a jigsaw is to attach a piece of adhesive back sandpaper to the blade. Turn the saw on with the speed all the way down, and you can use it as a power file to fine tune an edge. 
Just don't use too much pressure or speed because excess heat will ruin your sandpaper in a hurry. Don't forget that your jigsaw can also be used with a fence to make straight cuts. In fact, some saws have attachable rip fences like circular saws. We talked about how wax can help your saw to move smoothly across the surface. This is true with both curved and straight cuts. Many saws have plastic shoes on the bottom, but some have metal ones. Either can create fine scratches in some surfaces. If that's a concern, consider placing a couple strips of painter's tape on the edges of the base to create some non-marring skis. Finally, I know if I don't mention this, someone's going to ask why I didn't cover the tilting base option that's common on most saws. There's really not much to say about it. I think I've cut fewer than a handful of bevels with a jigsaw in my lifetime. It's just not my tool of choice for a precisely angled cut. But the option is there if you need it, and all the same rules apply. Choose the right blade, don't force the saw to cut faster than it wants to, and maintain forward movement as you pivot at the front of the tool. I hope this tutorial helps you get better results from your jigsaw, but I have one more interesting thing to share. We use blade guards and push sticks and safety glasses and hearing protection to keep us safe because we want to enjoy this craft for many years to come. But what about our lungs? I like Trend Stealth masks because they have bodies that fully seal on my face. This is important to me because a leaky mask is a useless mask. The original Stealth features a compact size, easily adjustable dual straps for a proper fit on your face, a downward facing exhale valve that won't fog your glasses, and replaceable N100 filters. I switched to Trend Stealth masks for my dusty work a couple years ago because they offer the advanced protection of a larger canister respirator in a less cumbersome size that's comfortable to wear all day long. Check them out at the link below the video.